Hello there and welcome to the Star Wars Showcase YouTube channel where I am excited uh, to start a new series of video commemorating the 10 year anniversary of the Star Wars Black Series line by Hasbro. And that's kind of crazy to think about because the Black Series would be going into, let me think, fourth grade if it were in the US educational system. Uh, which is kind of insane, because back in 2013, many thought this line wasn't going to last. But fast forward 10 years here, I think the Black Series is now a, a definite competitor with the you know ever-popular 3 and 3 quarter inch vintage collection, uh, and really stands out as one of the premier 6-inch collector lines. So it's my hope with this new video series here to take a look at each of the individual Black Series lines, uh, and kind of chronicle that journey over the last 10 years. Um, I'm a big Sergio Leone Spaghetti Western fan, so I think in order to do this in a concise and clear way, uh, I'm just going to break this down into the good, the bad, and the ugly for each of these different lines, talk about some of those different attributes for a minute or two, uh, as well as showcase some of the individual highlight figures uh, from that particular subline. So let's start from the start here with the orange line. Uh, these were the first Black Series figures released back in 2013, and waves back then consisted usually of, of two to four figures apiece. And when we're talking about the good, we were already able to see that on display uh, from that very first wave onwards. Um, is what those original figures used to do so well is just have such an incredible amount of accessories to go with each figure, and that was kind of the original intent of this line, was to provide this definitive figure. Uh, and so when you have, like, your Sand Trooper, he's coming with uh, a Storm Trooper blaster, he's coming with two different heavy blasters, a, a backpack, that, you know, level of addition there is something unheard of today. And when you look at another character like, let's say, Han Solo, for instance, he came with, you know, an alternate set of hands, he came with a Stormtrooper belt and a Stormtrooper blaster, so with just that one figure, you were able to have Han in pretty much every scene that he was in A New Hope. And sadly, the line has kind of transitioned away from this line of thinking. Uh, but, but this was one of my most favorite things that you were able to see as part of those early releases, is just the incredible accessories to go alongside those figures. Now, if we try to talk about the bad, I mean, it's the elephant in the room here, but these original figures just can't hold a candle to some of the releases today. Um, I mean, in terms of the head sculpts, these were still being painted on. And that photo real tech that we have today wouldn't be a thing for, you know, five to six more years. Alongside that, when it comes to our articulation and even just, I think, kind of the, the quality and feel of the figures themselves, um, again, hard to make that comparison to today's releases. And that might be a little bit unfair, a little bit of kind of like hindsight bias in play there, but... Uh, you know, take some of the new releases here, the Clone Wars Darth Maul or, you know, like a Miggs Mayfeld, and stack them up against those original figures, and yeah, the, the difference is noticeable. And then that kind of brings me to the ugly here. It is not so much a criticism of the Orange Line releases themselves here, uh, but more a call out to the fact that some of these sculpts that are now over 10 years old are still in play right now. Uh, I mean, that original X-Wing pilot Luke, the very first figure of the line, I mean, we've got, you know, there's a Wedge Antilles figure on that, and even as recent as last year, they had the, the new Antok Merrick Blue Squadron figure on that same body, and even though we've got some newer head sculpts on top of it, when you kind of compare the two, uh, as well as the fact that that figure is, is a little bit underscaled, it's definitely on the shorter side, uh, you are definitely seeing those decade-old sculpts kind of pushed to their very limit. And so that's something, I, I think, for some of these older figures, for X-Wing pilots, for Boba Fetts, would love to see uh, a full phase-out of, of some of those, those older sculpts. Let's, let's retire those, uh, because what they're able to produce today is, is, is really fantastic in comparison. So let's do a couple of honorable mentions here from some of the figures from the orange line. 
Uh, I, I did mention earlier Han Solo and the Sand Trooper, who were both fantastic. Um, I think some other, you know, notable figures here, I think Greedo uh, is, is actually pretty un, uh, underrated here. Uh, as even though he kind of lacks in the articulation department, uh, he came with this really great kind of wash coat detail on him that really highlighted a lot of the different, you know, the, the cloth of his jacket and, and his pants there. Uh, the line has kind of moved away from those kind of dirtied wash coats in favor of the, the printed paint applications. Um, so it was definitely awesome to see that on some of these earlier figures. And I'd be remiss here if I didn't mention one of my personal favorites was uh, Bespin Luke. Um, I actually didn't get this one until the uh, 40th anniversary packaging re-release a couple of years later. And so it did have an updated head on there. Uh, but Empire Strikes Back is my favorite movie from the trilogy and, and getting kind of the iconic Luke from that on a figure who, despite being older, holds up pretty well, especially with a new head sculpt. Uh, so that, that's definitely one of my favorites. And so that, in a nutshell, is our, our kind of our Orange Line retrospective. Uh, and the, the idea I kind of wanted to end on here is, is for many of these earlier releases, these these just warmed pegs for a long time. You'd walk into stores and there would just be, you know, dozens of these. Uh, and for many who were looking at this new six inch release uh, that Hasbro had put together, it seemed at the time like this was going to be a clear indicator that, hey, this just isn't going to last. You know, these are cool. These might be a gimmick. They might get some new collectors or pull away some of the McFarlane or, or NECA folks. But you know, Star Wars is and always will be, you know, the three and three quarter line. And uh, I, I think as we'll, we'll start to talk through more of the subsequent lines, it'll kind of become more clear uh, just how the Black Series was able to really solidify its place. And now that we find ourselves in 2023, really become uh, a hand in hand partner with the Vintage Collection in, in representing kind of that that top tier you know, mid-price range Star Wars collecting line. So I'd love to hear your thoughts here on this Orange Line retrospective. If you agree, if you disagree, if there's points you think I missed, you know, I would love to get a conversation going as part of these lookbacks. So please feel free to add things down in the comment below. Um, I'll definitely look to respond there uh, as I'd love to see what everyone else is thinking and feeling. 